Conrad. Man, am I glad to see you. What are you doing on this deserted road? Some guys from school drove out here and we're gonna start fooling around with drugs. When I told them all drugs do is mess up your head and get you in a lot of trouble, they kicked me out of the van and drove off. You're right not to get involved in the drug scene. Nobody with any sense wants any part of it. How do I get home? That's no problem at all. <laughs> game here today. Hi, I'm Tim Wells, and my partners are in the house. It's Sam Woodfolk, and new to the house, all the way from Central Catholic Ironman, is Joe Munoz. Joe, welcome to TV20. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Let's first talk about the two teams, Lonnie Burton and Fairfax. Sam, when you look at the Lonnie, the Fairfax team, Joe, let's talk about them first. When we talk to the coach, they come in here with three big wins in the playoffs, but what was the coach's keys to the game for him to win today? Well, the most important thing for Fairfax is sharing the basketball. They have to play team ball and not get caught up in the one-on-one -on -one game. Um, defense is key for them. They have to defend the three-point shot, and they have to stay focused and poised throughout the game. And our arch rival on the other side, Mr. Woodfolk. Biggest the Lonnie Burton Braves are going to be here for the next three weeks. So let's start with what did they say for their keys today? Well, the biggest concern was rebounding, but the keys to the game must share the basketball, team ball, team basketball there, apply defensive pressure for court, communicate with one another, and play team ball. We're hearing that word team ball, and we're going to find out very quick, because right now we're going to go over to Edwin Santiago for the player introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cadell Recreation Center for the 2019 Junior Boys Tournament Championship, featuring Lonnie Burton Braves and the Fairfax Panthers. Introducing Lonnie Burton Braves, seventh grader at Anton Verdina, number two, Lazarus Barber. Wearing number one, eighth grader at George Washington Carver, Malik Bennett. Seventh grader at Carver, number 13, Mike Juan Bennett. Sixth grader at Case is number three, Keyshawn Ellington. Eighth grader at Campus International, number 11, Javen Jackson. Ninth grader at Max Hayes, number seven, Jermaine Wilson. Number 18 is the ninth grader at East Tech, Randy Hill. Seventh grader at George Washington Carver, number 14, Amani Mitchell. Seventh grader at Alfred Benish, number five, David Patrick. And number four is Marveer Bolden. Lonnie Burton's Braves are coached by Mr. Anthony Gaston. Fairfax Panthers. Fairfax Panthers are coached by Mr. Jesse Bacon and assisted by Tyrone Hill. Eighth grader at Valley View Boys Leadership Academy, number 14, Amir Abdul Rashid. Ninth grader homeschooled, number nine, Mohammed Shakir. Number 16, the seventh grader at St. Adelbert, Eric Snow. Eighth grader at St. Adelbert, number 15, Joseph Watts. Eighth grade homeschooler, number eight, Brandon Gaines. Ninth grader at Benedictine is number four, Kamari Campbell. Eighth grader at Morgan, number two, Theotis Green. Number 18 is the seventh grader at St. Adelbert, Dallas McDonald. 
Number seven, eighth grader at Bolton, Bilal Shakir. Seventh grader at St. Adelbert, number 17, Antoine Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you rise and remove your flags for the singing of our national anthem by Miss Kristen Parker. Parker, 16 years old, starting us off with the national anthem. Well, you can see they are ready to go. At first, we're going to take a look at the officials that will call today's game. Again, they are certified all through the Ohio High School Athletic Association and it's an outstanding crew that we will see here today. On the left is Terrence Brown. He's a 1982 graduate of Collinwood High School. He also played some football in high school and college. 23 years as a senior project, eight years as an official. In the middle is Barry Wilson, 1984 graduate of Shaw, currently employed at Nassau. 25 years he's been tooting the whistle. And on the right, Mike Clark, a 1983 graduate of St. Joe High School. He played some football and ran track. He's also 10 years as an official. An outstanding crew that will call today's games. But Sam, when we look at the rules, there'll be some things that they'll have to deal with today. Yes, indeed. We have special rules for the game for today. First half is two quarters of eight minutes running time. Second half will be 16 minute running time. Clock will stop in the last two minutes of the game. Each team will get three timeouts per game. It is mandatory play in the first half. All overtime rules. First team to score five points with no clock. Each team will get one additional overtime timeout. Okay, while we line up, we'll give you the starters starting for the Lonnie Burton Braves. Number one, Malik Bennett, he's their point guard. Number 13, the shooting guard, Myquan Bennett. Number 11, Javon Jackson, he's the shooting guard. In the middle is the big guy, Randy Hill, number 18, and their small forward, David Patrick. On the other side for Fairfax, starting at guard, number 14, Amir Abul Rashid. Starting at point guard, number nine, Mohamed Shakur. At forward, Eric Snow, number 16. Joseph Watts, number 15 at the forward. And running out, the Otis Green. So we are underway from Cadell. Talking about team basketball, sharing the ball. They're going to fire a three. And that's number three, Javon Jackson. What a tree ball. Hey, 
So that's the first foul in the ball game. Fairfax is in the yellow. Lonnie Burton in the burgundy. Number one with the foul, and that is on Malik Bennett. And he has a tendency to get in foul trouble. He's from George Washington Carver, an eighth grader. And he got a good hold of them there. They're going to call it on 15 from Fairfax. You see, him, you see him here drive the lane. He went to the basket aggressive and drew the contact. 3 nothing early lead. He missed them both. Lonnie Burton with the offensive rebound. You can definitely see the intensity early on here. Both teams are scrappy. So that's on 16 gold from Fairfax. That's his first, team second. Two threes and immediately timeout Fairfax. Joe, let's talk about what we've seen so far. Fairfax seems like the ball just didn't bounce their way early, but they're they're competing. They're playing hard. They're definitely playing hard. They just got to do a better job on the uh, boxing out and hitting the glass a little bit. Too many second chance shots for Lonnie Burton's hurting them right now. And when you look at the Lonnie Burton side, Sam, one of the concerns he had was the rebounding. Well, he's, got, he's got to feel great so far. He's got to feel phenomenal because they're very, very, very scrappy and they're getting second and third attempts. So when you look at the tournament wins, Joe, for Fairfax, what were, who did they beat and what were the scores? They beat Collinwood in the opening game, 43-28. In the next round, they advanced to play Hamilton, beat them 39-37, and they beat the Gunning Gators 28-21 in the game to get to the championship. And what about the Braves, Sam? Their tournament wins. Well, they started off whooping on John F. Kennedy, 34-27. Then they come around and beat Zell Majoris, 37-22. And then they finished off with Glenville 34 29 to get to the championship there. To the hole and in. Number two. That was a nice drive and finish by number two to be with his green. Got a held ball, and it should go to gold, I believe. Unless they had a, uh, they're giving it to red. So let me get back on track here. Oh man, they're scrappy. Okay, six-two. Braves are up. Gonna fire a three from no man land, nowhere near. Sounds like the coach said, take it to the hole. <laughs> Go 
bucket by Mohamed Shakur. 6-4. Scrappy defense. Everybody picking him up. We are tied. Bucket by Amir Abdul Rasid. That held ball will give it back to Gold. You can feel the intensity all over the place in this gym today. Wow. Whatever Coach Bacon told his team in that timeout seems to have worked. They came out on a 6-0 run since that timeout. Turnover. Whoa. They call a foul on number 11. So 11 red with the foul. Javon Jackson, that's his first. We got a push from behind again. Red 11. Back to back on Javon Jackson. That's their 14 foul. In the, the league stats in the tournament show that the Lonnie Burton team plays their best defense usually in the first quarter. Number nine with the foul. That was Mohamed Shakur, his first three team seconds. third. Well, they called it on three? Three seconds. Oh, three seconds. Thanks, Joe. And if you actually look at it, Fairfax actually have more buckets. And the same scores. They're off and running again. That'd be on Malik. So number one from Lonnie Burton with the foul. That's his second. Is that right? I believe that's his third, Tim. That's definitely going to be something to watch moving forward. Eighteen with the foul. That's Dallas McDonald. Now he called 18. That was Randy Hill. That's his first. You got to hold on number two. So that foul was on two from Lonnie Burton. That was Lazarus Barbeau. So first quarter action leaves us tied at six. Uh, first of all, let me ask this, starting with Sam, a lot of aggressive play, man to man. I guess there's no there's no thought of you know running a play or well, <laughs> you know you, you always got to look at the first quarter as get the nerves and the jitters and all of that stuff out of the way. So that's a, a lot of what this first quarter was. But they're being aggressive. They're playing hard, being aggressive. So you can't ask for anything more than that. And Joe, Fairfax comes out in, after that timeout. They're in a, they go to the zone, and it seemed like they did a better job of rebounding, getting it out, and running with it. They did a great job putting pressure on the ball up top with the, the three guards up on the 3 2 zone. Applied a lot of pressure, forced some turnovers, and the big guys hit the glass a lot better after that timeout. So now we're going to see basically almost 10 different players because of the mandatory play rule. So again, we're here at the second quarter. We are tied. You are looking at the Junior Boys Division of Recreation Basketball Championship. Lonnie Burton in the maroon. Going to fire a three. Okay, no warm up at all. Just come out and shoot it. <laughs> Turnover again.
going to fire another three. I'll tell you what, they must <laughs> think they got all the shooters in the world from out there. And fast break layup by number seven. That's Jermaine Wilson. And they needed that bucket. Gonna count it. Number four. That was an and one. So the foul was on number four, Marvin Bolden, Marvier Bolden. The bucket was by number seven, Bus Bali Shakur. And he'll go to the free throw line. And you're looking at 13 to 15 year old junior boys basketball. And they're going to call a block on number seven. So they're going to call the foul on seven red, which is Jermaine Wilson. And that puts them in the bonus. So they'll shoot a one and one and on the free throw line is Donald McDonald. He's 0 for 2 in the tournament. You know, one of the things, Sam, I'm seeing, <coughs> and Joe, it seems like every time they get the rebound, they dribble, they're looking down at the ball. They're not looking up where they can get rid of it until they get in trouble. That's led to a few turnovers as well, Tim. That bucket was by Kamarian Campbell. And Fairfax now takes its first lead of the ball game, 10-8. So let's talk about what, <laughs> what the... Uh, what the coach is saying, hey, kick the ball. Hey. Was it a kick ball or not, Sam? It was not a kick ball officially. The ball, he did not intentionally put his foot out and try to disturb the ball. So there is no kick ball, great no call. So Lonnie Burton trails by two. One look, let's no. And there's another three. And that's Keyshawn Ellington. Now he's their three point shooter. He can fill it. Nice, nice team pass. Joe, you got to feel good about that one. Oh, that's a beautiful high low. One big man to another. That was beautiful. They got him on a walk. He oh. was traveling somewhere. He definitely was. <laughs> 3.50 to go, second quarter. We're coming from Cadell Recreation for the Junior Championship. And it's in! Number 18, Dallas McDonald. He's, he's shifty. Didn't see that one coming. Held ball, and it should go gold if I have it right. But I ain't been right too much today. And we got a timeout, Lonnie Burton. So Lonnie Burton takes a T.O. at 325 here to go in the second quarter. They get three per game. Well, that was a good timeout call right there, too, just to stop the, the momentum. Because right now you can obviously tell that Fairfax has picked up the momentum and they're playing a little bit more aggressive. So that's a great timeout by Coach Anthony Gasty. We're taking a look inside those huddles to see exactly what was going on. Joe, if you're Fairfax coach, what are, what are you telling them right now? You're up by three. Right now I'm telling my defense to, to keep up the intensity and the pressure. We're getting a lot of buckets in transition off of uh, forced turnovers. 
Sam, what about uh, the Braves? They've been they've been battling, but uh, what's he telling them right now? Well, he he must be telling them. Well, they're getting most of their buckets out of three pointers, but they have to penetrate that defense. That Fairfax defense is tenacious, but they have to penetrate it. <laughs> Belair Shaquille. <laughs> and he had, he put up the three sign for him. I tell you one thing, Joe, there you can feel the intensity in this Joker right now, buddy. That was great, great pressure in the corner there on that trap by Fairfax. Here comes the Braves. Gonna go right to the hole and get hammered by number eight. Brandon Gaines. That's his first foul. And going to the line to shoot is number 14, Amani Mitchell. But that's exactly what they need. So that way to break the defense down. This is a 50% free throw shooter. George Washington Tarver, a seventh grader. 13 years old. It was two for four going in. It's now two for five. Two to the mark. No. They get it back. Yeah. Nice pass inside. Turnover. They're going to call a foul, and I believe it's going to be on number two. Lazarus, Barbour, and if I have it right, that's their second. And they'll be on the free throw line. Shouldn't it be one and one? Yeah, I think they're just going on them. We're going one and one here. So seven will be the free throw shooter. And Bilal Shakur. He's from Bolton, Charles Bolton School, 13 years old. We saw he can hit the three. Let's see what he can do from the line. Got it. He has been instant offense off the bench today. He's got eight points already in this quarter. Felt like he was on fire, but he had a little water on him right there, baby. Ten seconds in the half. Did not get it, and they're going to call a foul underneath. We'll get you the number in a second. So that was on 18 in the gold. So Dallas McDonald picks up that foul. And that brings us to halftime. So, folks, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we have some very special young ladies that will perform here at halftime. Become a professional American Red Cross certified lifeguard today. You must be at least 15 years of age. Be able to swim 500 yards nonstop. Retrieve a 10 pound weight from the bottom of a pool and pass a written test. Lifeguard training classes are signing up right now. For more information, call 664-3018. That's 664-3018.
Welcome back to Cadell Recreation as you are now getting ready to look at the John F. Kennedy. The John F. Kennedy Royal Royalty. T. And let's talk about them, Sam. They're from your center. Royalty Dows, I'll tell you. Dance program that we just started this past season, and they are ready to rock and roll. Love. It's a big car hill, big fat tank, big large bills, but not good like big car bills, cold bills. saw the John F. Kennedy Royal Dows. And again, they'll be here again next week to perform one more time. But again, they're at the John F. Kennedy Recreation Center. And if you need to follow up on how do you get involved or what's going on over there, you can call Sam Woodfolk at 664-2572. Before we look at the uh, halftime stats, we first want to talk about Folks at home, this is going to make your day. Mom and dad, listen, this is the day. How about sending your kids to a summer camp free? One week free, totally free, ages from 9 to 13. And we're going to show you right now a little bit about what it's all about. It's that time again. Time to register your kids for summer camp at George L. Forbes. You must be a City of Cleveland resident between the ages of 9 and 13 and available for one free week of summer camp June through August. To register, bring proof of residency, age, and guardianship, up-to-date immunization records, and a copy of a physical to any City of Cleveland Recreation Center. For more info, call Camp Forbes at 216-263-5325. Again, that's 216-263-5325, and I'll see you at George L. Forbes this summer. Well, as you can see, it's an outstanding time, and if you're looking to register, now is the time at all your local recreation centers. Go up there, talk to their manager, tell them, I want to get my kid registered to go to summer camp. If you have more questions on the details, Pick up the phone right now and call that number on your screen. It's 263-5325. And Joe, obviously, today it was a sunny day. You know, basketball's coming to an end. We got to talk about them. The tribe's playing, baseball's coming. Kids are signing up right now. And uh, we got a graphic here of the different, different levels of baseball. But even at your own center, Joe, you feel, you feel that excitement of the kids ready to go? Oh, definitely. Our kids have started their um, conditioning already. So we've been in the gym doing some stretches, some working, um, playing some catch, working on a few fundamental things. But the kids are definitely excited, ready to get some baseball going. So we're asking you to please call your local recreation centers. We also have girls fast pitch. So we'd like you to take that time to ask them right there at the rec center. If you have questions regarding the baseball, you can call 664-2346. So first of all, Joe, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the, the halftime stats for the Fairfax team. They're out 19-11 here. A few things that stood out for me, first of all, Tim, was their um, two-point shot percentage. They are four for five in two-point field goal shooting 80%. If they can continue to get to the basket and get some mid-range shots, they're going to be in great shape in the second half. 
um, another thing that stood out to me was they only had three turnovers in that first half. So they did a great job of protecting the ball. And, and Sam, when you look at the Lonnie Burton team, it's got to be different with those turnovers. They, they really uh, turned it over much more than they wanted to. Yeah, you're talking about eight in the first half. That's crazy. So again, eight turnovers, and that was one of the things they talked about, taking care of the basketball, and then rebounding. Now, they did have an explosive rebounding situation there, so that actually kept them above. But one thing that really, really, really stood out is the 42% from the three-point free, three line. Wow, 42% is high. Yeah, let's take a look. You know, on both sides of the teams, they, they, they love the three. You know, they're out there. I mean, we know the three-point shots definitely impacted the game, but look at them here, man. And that was the first one, Javon Jackson. Here it comes again, another one. Like, bang, bang, bang. And the third one, they were knocking them down. Fairfax came back, number seven, by Lau, hit a three ball from the wing. Let everybody know. So where we are, start of the second half. We'll play a 16-minute half. They can substitute them any way they want. Again, Fairfax in the gold. Lead 19-11. Number two with the foul. But you got to love the aggressive take to the basket. I love nice the way time. he sold that pump fake, Sam. Oh, my. Every coach loves that. The only problem now is he's got to knock down his free throws. Missed both of them. And you notice that Fairfax is playing that 2 3 zone. And there's another turnover. Bucket by Mohamed Shakur. Extends it to the largest lead of 10. You know, Fairfax is playing a 2-3 zone, but they're, it's almost where they're matching up, matching them up, though. And that's giving Lonnie Burton Braves a tough time here. Well, you can see, Joe, uh, Sam, when they play out there, and Joe, your kids are playing up high to put that pressure on that three-point shot now. Their bigs are definitely getting out, closing out on the wings, helping the guards out a little bit. Another turnover and another turnover. Lonnie Burton needing a bucket. Fairfax rotating, playing good defense. What's that cliche about winning games? Put that in downtown. Malik Bennett is on the board with three. They're going to call an offensive foul. Oh, yeah. Nothing counting. That was perfect position all the way around right there. I mean, he's, and you can see here, he pretty much got position, stood his ground. Perfect. That is basic fundamental to the fullest right there. Got to love it. Twenty one fourteen as you see it right now. We do want to remind you folks you can be part of today's telecast. 
We got a held ball and it should go back to red. You look at it right here. Hey, they're down they're, on the floor. They're, they're scrapping. They're fighting for it. No one wants to give up. <laughs> you got to love it. I like the multiple defensive looks that Fairfax is putting out. It almost seemed like they were in a 1-2-2, two, two, falling back into a 3-2 zone now. Turnover. Another turnover. Hey, is this a sub? So we got a timeout on the floor, and Fairfax is going to call the timeout, yeah. I believe. That was a good call. He he thought he kept his pivot foot, but no, he moved it. He said, like, no, not me. Yep, he got caught. Well, while we have a timeout on the action, we'd like to let you folks know that, hey, uh, the Cleveland Recreation Centers, even though that summer's coming, remember, it will be outdoor pools, summer season, a lot of activities. And of course, what everybody looks for every year, we have the free lunch program at all recreation centers. They usually serve them from 12 to 1. All you need to be is a student in school. You eat there at the recreation center, and it's a pretty good healthy meal at that. Again, those are free for kids, free lunch program this summer at all Cleveland recreation centers. Quick bucket by number 14. They come out of that timeout. You couldn't ask for it better, coach. And it was quick. To the hole, no. So number one with the foul. He was uh, he was close there the whole time. But if I'm right, Joe, is that his fourth foul? That's definitely his fourth, and that's something to watch moving forward because he's been the catalyst for this Lonnie Burton team today. So and that's he, why they pulled him out right there because he's in foul trouble. And that's been consistent with him all year as far as foul trouble. He's had some foul trouble in earlier games. And you can understand why, though, because he's very aggressive on defense. And a push and a foul on number seven. So Jermaine Wilson picks up his second. And Joe, am I correct? Is that the second or third? That is his second, Tim. Second team foul. So at the line, number 16, Eric Snow. Usually a pretty good free thrower. He's having seven points per game. He's not on the board yet. From the free throw line, he was shooting 67% in the tournament. Missed them both. Game might come down to free throws at the end. Foul is on two gold. That's his first team second. Turnover. Oh my. Oh my. They got away with one there. Yes, they did. You see the hustle back. Somebody playing fast here. 23, 14, 8, 40 to go. To the hole nice. and in. Nice. Mohammed Shakur. For you at home, remember, we're picking an outstanding player of the ball game. 
Who will it be? Who do you think it should be? We got a substitution. Back in the ball game, he didn't waste much time with Mc Malik getting him back in there. He's got to be careful. He's got four, and there's still eight minutes to go in the ball game. Going to fire a three, and he hit it. I Just guess. what the doctor ordered. I guess that was a great substitution right there. He's valuable. Easy bucket, didn't drop. Here comes the Braves. Lonnie Burton looking for a bucket. To the middle, back out to Malik. You see they're right up on that three-point arc. They know they're trying to shoot that three. You know, coach is saying keep moving, but but a pass to beat a dribble any day of the week. It's almost like a 3-2 zone, Joe. It is, and they're covering a lot of ground because their forwards are extending a little higher to help out. Bucket by number 16. Eric Snow, he's on the board. So now you see this a 1 2 2 by Fairfax, and they're extending it. The multiple defensive looks by Fairfax have been causing some problems for Lonnie Burton today. They can't quite figure them out. Foul is on number 13 from Lonnie Burton. Maquan, that's his first. That's the team. Fourth, is it, Joe? Third? I believe they're third. Okay, man. I got you. 27-17. Gonna fire a three. It looked like that would have draw rain. It was so high. Rebound and a foul. Number 14, Amir Abdul Rashid has been doing a phenomenal job on the offensive glass today. So the foul is on Malik Bennett. That's his fifth. He's he's done for the day. And at the free throw line is number 14. Amir Abdul Sharif Rashid missed the first. It's three for eight from the line during the playoffs, so he struggles a little bit, right under the 40% mark, and he banged that one in. 5-11 to go. Turnover to the hole. Got to make those, Sam. You're right under the bunny. Right underneath the basket. Those are bunnies. But I tell you one thing, Fairfax have some big kids down low. Them boys are big. They've got a lot of length. If you look, number 16 is playing point guard for him right now, and he's got good size on him as well. Wow. There's a shooter there, Sam. They don't, he doesn't hesitate. There's no shot that he doesn't like. There's a three. Jermaine Wilson closes it down to eight. Four minutes to go in the ball game. Fairfax. And a foul. Foul is on Mohammed Shakur. That's their third team foul. And at the free throw line, number 14, 
Amani Mitchell. He missed two earlier. He's two for four, though, coming in. And it just ain't dropping in. He usually hits 50%. So if I'm banking on this one, I, I think he'd knock this one down. Say 50%, one for two here. He's got nice rotation on the ball. Look at it right here. He got it. There we go. Well, That's he, talking him into it, partner. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, let's stay consistent. 50%, baby. Nice up fake. Nice, nice. Number 16, Eric Snow. We knew he was due. Once again, you see how they're, they're, they're actually. One fifty to go. Clock now stops on every whistle, folks. Look who it is, Mr. Mr. Rebound, number 14, Amir Abdul Rashid. Two more offensive rebounds down there. So now we got him huddled up. We're going to try to sneak in and see if we can hear what the coach is telling him on the huddle here. Run that time off. Understand it? Keep playing deep. That's what we're going to do. We're going out on that. And you're looking at the uh, coach from Fairfax, Joe. Let's tell us a little bit about Jesse Bacon. Coach Jesse Bacon is a 1984 graduate of East Tech High School played point guard while he was there and he's been in recreation for three years and on the flip side Sam the head coach of the Lonnie Burton Braves Anthony Gaston he's a 2002 graduate of John Hay High School played basketball and baseball first base and he's been 10 years coaching in the recreation department. One thing that you can definitely say, Coach Bacon from Fairfax, he emphasized defense, and boy, they have picked it up this second half. So the fouls on number 11, Devon Jackson, that's his third. I got team five. Hopefully I got it right. You know what's really uh, amazing, Sam, on very unusual. Lonnie Burton came into this 24 from 29 from the line, shooting 83 percent. And today they haven't done well at all. Not at all. And you see. It's been consistent with about 50% today, I believe it has been. 14, there's those rebounds they were concerned about. He's a big time rebound, number 14. He has definitely been dominating the offensive glass all night. Yeah. He, he, he almost got a little bit of Kareem Abdul Jabbar look in him. And the way he's rebounding, man, he take me back a while. 
They're going to call a foul on number two. Again, that's Lazarus Barbeau. That's his third. And on the line is Mohammed Shakur. 40% during the tournament. He's averaged 10 points a game. He's been there as their leading scorer with 41 points. Turnover. Oh, and a foul. That can't win for losing. So the foul is on number two, Lazarus. That's his fourth. You can see the frustration right now. Building 109 to go in the ball game. And Shakur back on the line. He hit that one. Very costly turnover there by Lonnie Burton late in the game. But I think it's that Fairfax defense. It's been tenacious the whole second half. Unbelievable. You can definitely tell these young men have been practicing. Mohammed Shakur. Clock running down, 45 seconds to go. You at home, remember, who's your outstanding player? We'll have that award, and we got a couple special ones when we're all done. It went up. It should be a held ball. If I have it right, it goes to gold. Long pass. And lost it. That might have been your footsteps on that one. I don't know. A little footstep there, Joe? Definitely got <laughs> nervous when he heard those steps coming. Lonnie Burton basket got a lid on it. Just need to give it to him. So, folks, that brings us to the end of the ball game. But when we come back, we have some very special awards that are going to take place right at center court. Summer is coming, so that means it's time to get out and have some fun. Cleveland Recreation invites you to play by registering for any of our baseball, swimming, and junior golf programs. Baseball programs are available for use ages 4 through 19. The basic fundamentals of the game are taught, and use progress through various levels, ultimately participating in the Connie Mac League. If you would rather create a project of your own, or express yourself through performing and visual arts, the Division of Recreation offers arts, crafts, ceramic programs, and show wagon performances. So come celebrate summer fun. Don't miss out on the free lunch program, summer camp, soapbox derby racing, and a host of other special events. You may even have the opportunity to celebrate an Indian's victory in person at Progressive Field. 
Don't let summer pass you by. Visit one of our 20 recreation centers, 25 supervised playgrounds, 19 indoor pools, and 22 outdoor pools, and have yourself the best summer ever in the city of Cleveland. Welcome back to Cadell Recreation, and right now we're going to go to center court with Ashley Jackson for our special presentation. Welcome back. We're here with our 2019 Senior Boys Championship game. Right here we have our runner-up, Lonnie Burton. Good job, guys. Coach, do you have anything to say about your season and the game today? We did good. We did good. We played hard, and that's all that I care about. So we played hard, and we had fun. We'll be back next year. And here we have on my left, Fairfax champion. So we also have three other awards that we're going to present, which are the, I feel, the most important. This is for the highest GPA on each team. The first, I have Lazarus Barber from Lonnie Burton. Congratulations, get the bag. Get a step up and get a... The second, we had two highest GPAs for Fairfax, Joseph Watts. And the third we have, he is not here, but I would say the coach will uh, take this for Quincy Shields from Fairfax. So the last trophy we are going to give out will be our MVP from Fairfax, number 14, Amir Abdul Rashid. He had seven points, 11 rebounds, and six offensive rebounds. Coach, would you like to say anything about your team for this 2019 season? Yes, I'd just like to just thank God for letting us be props to force right now. I'm so proud of these kids though, for believing in themselves, doing what I ask them, they fall hard. Uh, mad respect for Lonnie Burton, you guys are tough. But I'm just so proud of them bringing this trophy and this bacon back down to Fairfax. And a great job, y'all. So I'm just so proud of them. That concludes this ceremony for our 2019 Junior Championship. Back to you, Tim. Thank you, Ashley. Again, a great day. We had academic awards going out to three kids. One of two of them had 4.0, and that's really what it's about. But, Joe, when you look at the Fairfax team, we kind of labeled it as your team to watch all day. Really, he's got a lot to be proud of, and the rebounding definitely played a role. Oh, the rebounding was the biggest factor in the game. Um, Amir dominated the glass with a lot of help from Bilal Shakur and Mohammed Shakur on the glass. But... What did it for me was the multiple defensive looks and the pressure they put on the ball. Yeah, and before we leave, we'd like to point out that uh, it was the Sweeney Marketing Company that donated the trophies as well as the uh, academic awards this year. Our special thanks to Jim Sweeney and his marketing firm for giving back to the kids of Cleveland. Folks, we want to remind you before we close that next week we'll be right back here on TV 20. It'll be the little guys, the 9 to 12 year olds, youth boys basketball championship, and it'll be between the Esterbrook Eagles and the Lonnie Burton Braves. So for Sam Woodfolk, Joe Munoz, I'm Tim Wells. Good night, everyone.